Are you ready to go five pounds down? Well, today we're getting toned arms, abs, and legs with our lightest dumbbells. So grab yours and let's go. All right, beautiful bees, let's go ahead and get moving and groove and have your dumbbells completely out of the way. And let's get started with some arm circles with high knees. You guys, welcome to the workout. I'm Paula B. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend. And around here, we are all about making peace with your menopausal body by finding a healthy weight and moving through the world in ways that feel like love. And you guys, you know what feels like love? Losing weight with the 5-0 method, where every single day we do five things that make you say, oh, I had no idea it could be this simple to lose weight after menopause. The first thing we do is we eat the right number of calories every single day, which is not necessarily less than you've been eating before. Every single day we drink the right amount of water, which is half your body weight in pounds in fluid ounces of water. Every single day we get the right amount of sleep by going to bed at the same time every night, getting up at the same time every morning and not worrying too much about how much of that was actual sleep, because sometimes it's not. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. Every single day we exercise moderately. Oh my gosh, with a workout just like this one that is almost definitely not more than you were doing before. And the most important thing of all, every single day we manage our minds by finding our thoughts and deciding if they're helpful. And I have a helpful thought for you that might be helpful, might not, as they often are. And the way you would know if it's helpful is if you feel good when you say it. If you feel anything other than good, sad, mad, angry, depressed, weird, off-put, whatever it is, then this is not a helpful thought for you. Today's thought is I belong here. Because my friends, you do, oh my gosh. You belong here, like, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, in the universe, in the world, on earth, wherever you live, in your house, you belong here with me doing this workout, <laughs> with me in general, no matter, no matter your age, no matter your gender, no matter what you look like, sound like, smell like, you belong here with me and thank you. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes because welcome to my home. Welcome to Blossom's home. She's just about to go to sleep. <laughs> and then I started pointing at her and she's like, what? My friend, my friend, I belong here. It's one of my favorite thoughts, especially sometimes when I start to have that feeling like maybe I don't really belong here. Maybe this is not the place for me. Maybe this is a little tough for me. And I just realized that I do not have my timer. So I am going to tell you about today. And then there's going to be an edited pause while I set my timer and put it on my shoulder because here's what it looks like today. I've got the handy dandy gym bus, or I will at least, set for 30 second intervals. We're gonna go back and forth between walking and other cardio exercises exercises. I'm going to have my lightest weights in my hand the entire time. You are welcome to make this workout work for you, my friends. I'm going to stop now and get the timer and I'll be right back. And just like magic, here we go. I'm going to grab my dumbbells and we are going to get started with 30 seconds of walking. You guys, you know what? I belong here whether or not I make mistakes, whether or not things go exactly like I planned. I belong here is such a nice, helpful thought for me, and I hope that it feels helpful for you. Feeling like you belong is one of our most, like our primal, instinctive things that we fear, not belonging. By the way, when it beeps, we're gonna be doing middle skips. It's your opposite elbow and opposite knee coming up, ah, like midway, like a middle <laughs> skip. We are not actually jumping today. We are not trying to get down on the ground, all low impact, and today is, I'm gonna call it possibly shoulder friendly. We are never going up overhead, but we do have quite a few movements in different planes of motion that may or may not feel amazing for your shoulders. I tend to call things shoulder friendly. By the way, when it beeps again, we're going back to walking. I tend to call things shoulder friendly if we're not going up overhead, and today we are not. So. Hopefully, that feels shoulder friendly to you. I try really hard to be careful with things like that because I know that if I call something knee friendly but then we do something that's a little bit not okay for your personal knee, that it doesn't feel knee friendly to you. If I call something shoulder friendly and then we do certain exercises that you're like, oh no, I don't really like to move that direction, then it might not be shoulder friendly for you. Tell you what though, we are not going overhead is definitely a fair thing to say. When it beeps again, we're doing low swinging heel dips, which means that our hands not going overhead are gonna swing from side to side while we dig one heel out to the front and then the other. Now today is a bit of a, a repeating 
exercise or workout. <laughs> I was going to say repeating, no repeat, but no, no, we're repeating. We are going back and forth with walking in between every exercise. And then I've also got a couple of mini circuits for us today. So when it beeps again, we're coming back to walking. And then I have one other low impact exercise in this mini circuit. And here we come back to walking. My friends, have you noticed that these 30 second intervals are a little bit long? <laughs> Here's the thing about walking with weights as we are doing today. It is definitely going to be up to you to find your moderate with today's workout. Anytime we have any weights in our hands, especially when we're trying to move at a cardio pace, your heart rate is gonna come up pretty significantly higher than it does without weights in your hands. By the way, when it beeps again, we're doing can-cans. It's a knee and a kick and a knee and a kick. You can get your hands involved if you'd like to. You certainly don't have to. I do a little bit of hands, not a lot. I am finding that this pace might be a little bit fast for me. Sometimes that happens. I come out of the gate feeling energetic, feeling good, and then I realize, oh, hey, I've got weights in my hands. <laughs> My heart rate is definitely coming up. Feel free to modify this moderate workout to make sure that it's actually moderate for you. Here we come back to walking. This was our first mini circuit. So we're gonna do those middle skips, the low, low swinging heel digs, and the can-cans one more time. But we're gonna have walking in between all of them. When in doubt, my friends, walk it out. <laughs> It's always one of my favorite mottos, but especially in a workout like this one. The thing about having something, even your lightest weights in hand, it doesn't matter how light the weights are. Here we go with middle skips, opposite knee, opposite elbow. What matters is that it's not just your plain body weight. As soon as you have anything in your hands doing anything, your heart knows that there's a difference. Your heart will start pounding a little bit harder because it's a little bit more effort. And over time, your heart, even with, even with low effort, moderate effort, very minimal effort, over time, the duration of your effort, your heart rate, here we come back to walking, your heart rate will continue to climb. This is a thing called cardiac drift. I love knowing this because it reminds me, especially on those workouts where you start off feeling like, okay, this is really easy. No matter what you are doing, let's say that you were taking one step a minute, truly one step a minute. If you continued taking one step a minute over the course of an hour, two hours, three hours, all day, your heart rate would continue dripping. Here we go with those low swinging heel digs. Your heart rate would continue drifting up, 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 up until, well, until at the end of whatever that duration was, if it was a particularly long duration, your heart rate would be well past moderate. The thing about finding your moderate is that you are finding what feels moderate for you I'm gonna say right now, but honestly, it might not be right now. Sometimes, sometimes I still have a hard time judging. <laughs> sometimes I'll be like, oh no, I feel great. That's the endorphins talking. It's not necessarily, here we come back to walking. It's not necessarily your body, you know, like your arms and your muscles and your heart and lungs talking. So be very careful to monitor what you think of as moderate. Moderate is something that you could do this exact workout every single day for the rest of your life. That made you pull back a little bit, didn't it? <laughs> I know, when it beeps again, we're doing can-cans. Exactly, when you think about it like that, here we go, with a knee and a kick and a knee and a kick. Now here's the thing, I don't actually recommend that you do this exact workout every day for the rest of your life. I mean, there are plenty of other workouts to do. I have thousands of them, and there are just more interesting things to do than this handful of exercises that I have for us here today. However, thinking about moderate as something that you could do every every single day for the rest of your life with any workout can really help inform, here we come to walking again. This is the beginning of our second mini circuit. We don't have too many of them, by the way. We only have three. So when it beeps again, okay, we're doing a brand new exercise that I'm calling deadlift X's. It's kind of like the, 
the weird sister <laughs> of deadlift jacks, except that we're not doing jumping jacks with our arms. What's happening is that we're gonna start with our hands kind of right here at our chest. As we hinge forward into that deadlift, and by hinge forward I mean push your butt back, we're actually gonna swing our hands back behind us and bring them up wherever they can get to. So for me, that's, I mean, it's not really overhead, but it is kind of because I am bent over so far. You should be feeling this, first of all, in your booty, and second of all, oh, in those triceps back there, right? <laughs> That's why we're doing it, my friends. Now, this is the particular exercise that I was thinking of that might not feel shoulder-friendly to you. If you don't love this range of motion, bring it down a little bit lower. No worries at all. Here we come back to walking. I always want you to move in a way that feels best for your body. That might be completely different than what I'm doing. It might be exactly what I'm doing. It might be what I'm doing, but a little bit slower. It might be what I'm doing, but without weights. It might be, I mean, it could be anything, truly. As long as you are not getting injured and you are finding the le level of moderate that's going to get you to your goal. Really specifically with a weight loss goal, here we go with diving airplanes. Hands out to the side. Oh, we're making those airplane noises, my absolute favorite. Because really, what's better than an exercise that has sound effects, right? <laughs> my friends, having those airplane arms out to the side, also really feeling this work for me in my abs, Ooh, and my big latissimus dorsi, those big, big muscles in the middle of your back. And here we come back to walking really thinking about moderating your effort. The thing about moderation, let me clear something up for you in case you've ever wondered about this. The reason I tell you to be moderate every single day while we're losing weight is truly to help you manage your weight fluctuations. When it beeps again, by the way, we're doing side shakes. That's the one where we kind of twist our bodies to the side, just do a little shake out to the side and then twist our bodies the other way and shake out the other way. It's a little bit of a pivot here in the middle. So shake and shake. I used to like, or I usually like to do just a little bit of a kick back while we're doing the shake, just a little bit of fun, not going overhead, more like going up a little and out wherever feels comfortable for you. If you'd prefer to shake down, that's totally okay too, my friends. Whatever works for you works for me. The thing about finding moderate for you while you were losing weight, the fact is you can, here we come back to walking. That was our second mini circuit. Going to do that mini circuit one more time. So the next time it beeps again, we're doing those deadlift X's. You could, like a hundred percent, work on some kind of schedule where you work out like really hard one day and then recover the next and then do like a couple of days of moderation, maybe another day of recovery, depending on how that works for you, how your body feels, and then like another push day. Like working in a cycle like that, here we go with those deadlift X's, working in a cycle like that is completely fine for weight loss if if you are fueling correctly. Here's why I suggest that you eat the exact same number of calories every day and that you do the exact same intensity, if not necessarily the exact same kind, but the exact same intensity, aka moderate exercise every single day. Your body weight will fluctuate literally no matter what. Like your body, here we come back to walking, your body has billions of processes that it is doing every single day all day, every day, billions of things going on, cells being born, cells dying off, cells moving here, cells moving there. All of them are doing things like taking in energy and producing waste. Every single process ever does that. So at any given time, you have cell processes going on that, for example, are producing waste. Here we go with those side shakes. That waste that your cells are producing at any given time might add a little weight onto the scale. And I'm talking about like waste that you know about, <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about, and also just cellular waste that you don't know about. There's, there's way more processes that our bodies are doing that we are unaware of, and all of them are doing their thing. They're taking in energy, they're doing their thing, and they're producing waste. Here we come back to walking, and here we go, entering our third and final mini circuit. So when it beeps again, we're gonna do speed skaters. That's the one where our hands are making infinity sign, and we are swooshing from side to side, because it used to be called swooshing skiers. <laughs> 
except for the fact that it's definitely more of a skating move. The thing about your weight is it's gonna go up and down. It is. Fluctuations are completely normal, depending on what's going on with you, how you've eaten, how you've slept, how you've hydrated, all the different processes. Here we go with speed skaters. Your body at any given time could go up or down from one day to the next. I've had fluctuations as large as four pounds. Four pounds to me felt I mean, a little shocking, certainly, but also, I understood what it was. I mean, that particular time, the, the biggest, the biggest one I've ever had. I was severely dehydrated. I had just run something particular and I was also had not slept very well. So even though I had just done, here we come back to walking, even though I had just done like a big running event, my weight went up by four pounds because I was dehydrated and very tired. Your body is going to do what your body is going to do. And the thing about having the same level of effort every day, eating the same amount of calories every day, is you are likely to mitigate some of that fluctuation. By the way, when it beeps again, we're doing wide open pretzels. So our hands are going open and shut wide in the middle here, while one foot is coming up and making that tree pose pretzel thing that I can't seem to decide which one I'm gonna call it. <laughs> so you're bringing your foot towards your opposite knee while your hands are opening and closing at more or less chest height. If you need to bring this down a little bit, please do. My friends, yeah, here on the third mini circuit. Did your weights get heavy? <laughs> I tell you what, drop them. This is awesome cardio. This is fun and this is good for you no matter what you're doing. Thinking about your moderate effort, here we come back to walking. Thinking about your moderate effort is the thing that's going to get you results. Here's what I was saying about the weight fluctuations. When you work out really hard, your body is going to produce inflammation. Like that's what it does. That's what it's supposed to do. That's how it builds muscles is it sends out inflammation first and then it does all this other stuff, other you know, 100,000 processes, whatever it is. When it beeps again, by the way, we're doing chicken wing sidekick. So hands are gonna be like underneath your chin somewhere and elbows are flapping like chicken wings while one foot kicks out to the side, not overhead. But this might not be great for your shoulder. You, my friends, get to figure out what feels best for you. When it beeps again, we're coming back to walking and then we're gonna finish this last mini circuit one more time. Such a good job, my friends. So here's the thing. That inflammation shows up on the scale. I mean, inflammation is, honestly, it's, it's basically water retention in a lot of ways. Uh, there's, there's more to it than that, but it's an easy way of thinking about it. Here we come back to walking. Mostly the, way, the reason I think about it that way is because I feel so puffy, and I know that my body is trying to hold on to as much water as it can so that it can fuel all of those processes. So that inflammation can actually stick around for a couple of days. And the thing about trying to fuel four different efforts is that you might not always feel as hungry as your body needs, or you might feel hungrier kind of mentally. Like, man, I worked out hard today. I really deserve, here we go with those speed skaters. I really deserve that extra whatever, like just fill in the blank there. It doesn't matter if it's healthy food or junk food or whatever. You might feel, you know, like you'd want to eat some more. The thing about that is that it can be really hard to judge. You can lose weight that way, you absolutely can. If you are eating in a mild caloric deficit, you can lose weight doing anything, literally anything. You can lose weight without exercising at all. It really is a matter of mitigating, here we come back to walking, mitigating a lot of different factors, making sure that you are fueling appropriately for your effort every single day and making sure that you recover. The thing about that big push effort and the inflammation that it sends out, at this age, with this much estrogen slash none, your body isn't recovering as fast as it used to. You might feel okay and then kind of go into your moderate efforts or your push efforts. Here we go with those wide open pretzels. But your body, if it didn't actually recover, is gonna hold on to a little bit of inflammation and then a little bit more inflammation and then a little bit more inflammation. And then it's gonna go into a basically a chronic stress response, which means that it's not just gonna be inflammation that shows up on the scale, it's gonna be actual fat storage. So the thing about exercise exercising moderately every single day is that we are really, really keeping our effort, our recovery, here we come back to walking, our recovery is the thing that we're thinking about. We're making sure that we are fully recovered because we didn't work out very hard 
so that we can work out again tomorrow, so that we can eat the exact same amount of calories every day, we can exercise the exact same amount of intensity every day, we can keep everything even keel, and then your weight's still gonna fluctuate. It is, it's totally still gonna fluctuate. By the way, when it beeps again, we're doing those chicken wing side kicks for the third or second or final time. Your weight is still gonna fluctuate, but you will, here we go, <laughs> side kick. But they, the fluctuations will probably be slightly less, slightly more manageable, and it will make that whole managing your mind, finding your thoughts and deciding if they're helpful, a teeny, tiny bit easier. You're still gonna have thoughts. <laughs> Some of them are still gonna be unhelpful, <laughs> my friends. Hey, you know what? When it beeps again, we are done. Oh, but we are not quite finished. I've got some really good balance work for us today. You are welcome to take this however you'd like to. We're doing super slow sprinters, opposite knee to opposite elbow, and then extend out the same arm and same leg, or rather, the arm and leg on the same side. So opposite knee to opposite elbow in the middle, same arm and leg on the same side, go to full extension. If you need to tap down in between, please do. This is something I've been practicing for a long, long time and weirdly, weirdly, my balance is actually pretty good today. Probably shouldn't say that before the next side, but, but there you go, I've already jinxed it. Here we go, opposite elbow, opposite knee and full extension. <laughs> I don't really, I don't actually believe in jinxing, but I do notice sometimes that as soon as I start thinking to myself, oh, my balance is really good, I start looking around, I start behaving in ways that will make my balance not quite as good. So I'm gonna keep my eyeballs on this weird speck of dirt on my baseboard over here. And the next time it beeps is the very last time it beeps, we're gonna put our dumbbells down, yay! And we are going to cool it down. Oh my goodness. What a good job you did. Was that moderate for you today? I certainly hope so. And if it wasn't, here's the thing. This is actually why I started this whole conversation. If this got a little bit past moderate, make sure tomorrow is a little bit under. Take it as basically a recovery day. Make sure that you are giving your body everything it needs. And one of the things that your body needs is recovery. It needs to be able to return to homeostasis, to be able to get through that inflammation and then come back down so that you can do more stuff and have a good time. Okay, we spent a lot of time talking about moderation and not very much about that I belong here thing. So let me just remind you, my friends, my friends, if you, if you enjoy the workouts, you enjoy listening to me talk, let's go ahead and open it up. And got a little bit of help from that moderation conversation, give yourself a hug and a pat on your sweaty back. And honestly, even if you didn't, even if you mute me every time and put on your own music and aren't even listening to this conversation, my friends, you belong here. Thank you so, so, so much for working out with me. Today was number 42. I've got three more great workouts for us this week. Oh, they're gonna be so much fun. And I hope that you had a wonderful time today. Thank you for working out with me. Make sure you subscribe before you go. And I'll see you tomorrow.